We're here at Merchant Taylor School. I'm joined by Pete Waxman, physiotherapist, head of medical services. Pete, thanks for joining us. We're here for our regular monthly catch-up, chatting through the injuries within the squad. I think Finney's the latest one to join you on your bench. What's the latest with Finney, who pulled up in the last Derbyshire game? Yeah, yeah, Finney um, was bowling actually in the morning of, I think it was day three or four, um, at the game there at Derby, and felt some tightening and a little pull in his calf. So he didn't take any, he didn't bowl in that in the rest of the game. And we got it looked at, and as we thought, he has got a little grade one strain of his calf, which is basically means just a small, very small tear, which has kept him out of this game. Um, some people might have seen him here today, running up and down and doing his rehab. Um, he, he'll be fine, um, a bit unfortunate, but we're looking to have him, well, he's definitely going to be fit for the 2020 um, starting next week. Um, and depending on how things go, that may be the way that we go, just getting ready for that, getting fully prepared for 2020, but we'll see how things go over the next few days. But it's it's a minor injury, but a frustration, obviously. Yeah, I guess especially frustrating for Finney. I mean, he, he seems to have a huge amount of mental strength. He's picked up a lot of niggles, but he keeps bouncing back. Yeah, and it probably even more frustrating because, of, as, as we all saw, he was probably getting close to be, being back to his best um, bowling, you know, he felt good. He was smiling, and he was bowling quick, and you know everything was everything had come together. So yeah, and I think I said last time it's like another bump in the road. But um, fingers crossed, this we'll we'll have a good run in for the rest of the season. Absolutely, uh, James Harris. Uh, I know he continues to recover from his broken thumb. Fairly close to a recall, I understand, for this Gloucester game. Um, but instead, he's uh, he just misses out, and he's playing for the twos this week against Kent instead. Yeah, I mean, as we as we know with James, he got that broken thumb um, uh, in the game four weeks ago and carried on batting and, and nearly did a valiant job nearly saving the game for us and um, he's a tough character but he's bowling again now and he was looking great in the nets and I think the coaches were keen for him to play but he just wasn't quite there, he couldn't hold his bat, he couldn't really perform his skills with a bat, he's only, you know, he, he needs another week and that's what he'll be doing in the second team this week, he'll be um, building up his tolerance again in the thumb, giving it another few days just to fully heal up. Um, I think it was probably a tiny bit optimistic to have him ready for this this game now, but he's he's chomping at the bit and all being well, he'll be he'll be in the mix for Glamorgan. That's good to hear. And Martin Anderson, I know he's obviously been missing pretty much for the large part of the season after injuring his back early part of. Uh, he's had a fairly lengthy road uh, to recovery, and he's been working very closely with you. Uh, some positive news there, I hear. Yeah, no, this is a great day. This is a milestone for for Martin and and us. And he's playing second team cricket today. Um, I haven't checked the scores in the last couple of hours, but he's playing as a as a batter. So this is his big return. Um, he's fully fit to field and bat. Um, obviously, given the nature of his injury and the spinal surgery that he had, the bowling is going to take a bit longer. Um, and we'll review that again in six weeks, but there's certainly there's not there's going to be a bit of time before we expose his body to bowling. But you know, as we know, he's you know he's a great batter as well, and he'll be uh, looking to prove himself. And I think he'll have a big smile on his face today, having to, having come back after all this time off. So yeah, but he's doing great. That's great to hear. It's been a tough journey for Martin. Uh, and finally, I think Robbie White again, some good news there. Robbie obviously returned from a lone spell uh, injured to us from Essex. Uh, he's had a bit of bit of time on the sidelines after turning an ankle quite badly, um, but I think he's recovered ahead of schedule, isn't he? He's obviously here playing against Gloucester this week. Yeah, that's that's been another another positive one really. It was he played second team cricket last week. We were touch and go as to how how well he'd performed, but he he, he got through the three day game and then he looked good. So he played in the two twenty twenties, and obviously much to well, wouldn't say surprise, but he impressed the coaches and and he was pulled back into the first team so yeah he's 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 done great and he's he's fine now so yeah he's uh he's made a quicker than expected recover from his ankle from his ankle strain but he's worked pretty hard to get there well, that's great news as well I, I think that probably brings us up to speed with all the injuries yeah. i just want to have a quick just to finish up having a quick look ahead waxy at the t20 campaign obviously that puts different strains and stresses on the players bodies mm-hmm. Um, they go through a, a very different regimen in terms of preparing for their games and obviously the games themselves are quite intense. That must, I guess, have an impact on you as, as the man who ultimately has to pick the pieces up from the workload they go through. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a couple of points there, really. One is, I think, probably the coaches, maybe the players find this bit of a frustration in that there's no there's no real time to prepare for the 2020 as we'd like. As we know, we play Glamorgan this coming weekend. I think we have one day get home for one day and then play a game then within a day or two after that so there's not much of a transition period and they've obviously got to get their uh, 2020 heads on um, 
I guess from a workload point of view, they're obviously not bowling as many overs, so we're, we're not having to keep their workloads up to 30 or 40 overs a week where they're just bowling. So that, that will be factored into the amount of bowling they do. And certainly the athleticism and the intensity would be increased. And I think a lot of that um, is... They're exposed to a lot of that within the training that they do, which they haven't been able to do as much because they're playing so much Red Bull cricket, but that will certainly be ramped up. Dimmy's arrived and, and Skegg's chomping at the bits with all his um, new ideas and newfangled gadgets and things to get them to get them in in the right headspace for 2020. But um, I'd like to think, actually, that it's not a huge sort of injury risk coming to 2020. It might actually be when we come out of the 2020 and then have to play a four-day game in the middle of it all that actually sometimes is, could, can be an issue. But... Um, but no, I think we'll be fine. We're ready. Well, actually, that's good to hear. Look, thanks ever so much for the update, Pete. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and here's to a very quiet month ahead. With only Finney on the treatment table now, you could be putting your feet up on a beach soon. Yeah, well, yeah, that'd be nice. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Cheers, Fletch.